Good morning. Welcome to one and all. Welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus. This morning we celebrate another festival of the Christian church year. So two weeks ago we had the celebration of Jesus' ascension back to, into the glory of heaven where he sits at the right hand of the heavenly Father ruling over all things. That's uh, the right hand of God is, is everywhere and that's what Jesus is doing. He's ruling for our blessing. So. You know, Actually, Jesus' ascension was actually the Thursday before, uh, but we celebrated that on Sunday. Then last Sunday, we celebrated the festival of Pentecost, the special outpouring of God the Holy Spirit. And today, we celebrate the festival of the Holy Trinity. Uh, you might call this a kind of get back to basics Sunday. We ask, you know, who is God? You know, what is God really like? And, and we especially think of, of the mystery of his being, that he's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three distinct persons, yet one deity, one being, and uh, just the, the mystery and the marvel of that uh, we focus on today. So let's begin with the opening uh, Trinity Festival acclamations and invocation. You find this on the top of page two of this morning's bulletin. Let's begin there. O oh, three in one Lord, you are neither made nor created by anyone. Holy Trinity, you are uncreated, you are infinite, and you are eternal. Within your triune being, none comes before or after. None is greater or inferior. All three persons are to be worshipped as one God. We hold to this true Christian faith. So we praise you in your majesty and in the mystery of your divine being, O triune Lord, as we gather on this festival of the Holy Trinity. We worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let's join together in the singing of that opening hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. It's hymn 195 in your hymnal.
Please stand. To guide our worship today, we follow the order of service on page 15 in the front part of your hymnal, the common service. We continue with the confession of sins on the middle of the page there. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We continue on the middle of page 17 with the prayer of the day. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, dwelling in majesty and mystery, filling and renewing all creation by your eternal spirit and manifesting your saving grace through our Lord Jesus Christ. In mercy, cleanse our hearts and lips that free from doubt and fear, we may ever worship you, one true immortal God, with your Son and the Holy Spirit living and reigning now and forever. The congregation may be seated. Our scripture readings on this festival of the Holy Trinity speak to us about that, that marvel of God's being. And they, they call to us uh, to give God the glory that he truly deserves. Our Old Testament lesson is recorded for us by the prophet Jeremiah. This is in chapter 10, starting here at the first verse. We'll come back to this word of God for our sermon this morning. The Lord speaks through his prophet Jeremiah. Hear what the Lord says to you, O house of Israel. This is what the Lord says. Do not learn the ways of the nations or be terrified by signs in the sky, though the nations are terrified of them. For the customs of the peoples are worthless. They cut a tree out of the forest and a craftsman shapes it with his chisel. They adorn it with silver and gold. They fasten it with a hammer and nails so it will not totter. Like a scarecrow in a melon patch, their idols cannot speak. They must be carried because they cannot walk. Do not fear them. They can do no harm, nor can they do any good. No one is like you, O Lord. You are great, and your name is mighty in power. Who should not revere you, O King of the nations? This is your due." 
among all the wise men of the nations and in all their kingdoms, there is no one like you. They are all senseless and foolish. They are taught by worthless wooden idols. Hammered silver is brought from Tarshish and gold from Uphaz. What the craftsmen and the goldsmith have made is then dressed in blue and purple, all made by skilled workers. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God, the eternal king. When he is angry, the earth trembles. The nations cannot endure his wrath. Tell them this. These gods who, do, who did not make the heavens and the earth will perish from the earth and from under the heavens. But God made the earth by his power. He founded the world by his wisdom and stretched out the heavens by his understanding. When he thunders, the waters of the heavens roar. He makes clouds rise from the ends of the earth. He sends lightning with the rain and brings out the wind from his storehouses. Everyone is senseless and without knowledge. Every goldsmith is shamed by his idols. His images are a fraud. They have no breath in them. They are worthless, the objects of mockery. When their judgment comes, they will perish. He who is the portion of Jacob is not like these, for he is the maker of all things, including Israel, the tribe of his inheritance. The Lord Almighty is his name. This is the word of our Lord. I invite you now to open your hymnal to page 132 in the front part of your hymnal. There you will find the Athanasian Creed. It's one of the three, what's often referred to as the ecumenical creeds that generally are ex accepted uh, throughout all of Christianity. Uh, this morning, uh, we will break this into three sections here. Uh, we begin with the first section that focuses on that mystery of the Trinity. We'll read this responsively. Uh, I will read the, the lines that are printed all the way out to the margin. The congregation can respond with those lines that are indented. Let's make confession of our Christian faith. Whoever wishes to be saved must, above all else, hold to the true Christian faith. Whoever does not keep this faith pure in all points will certainly perish forever. Now this is the true Christian faith. We worship one God in three persons, and three persons in one God, without mixing in persons or dividing the divine for each person, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, is distinct. But the deity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is one, equal in glory and co-eternal in majesty. What the Father is, so is the Son, and so is the Holy Spirit. The Father is uncreated, the Son uncreated, the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father is infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. The Father is eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Spirit is eternal. In the same way, the Father is almighty, the Son is almighty, the Holy Spirit is almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. 
For just as Christian truth compels us to confess each person individually to be God and Lord, so the true Christian faith forbids us to speak of three gods or three lords. The Father is neither made nor created nor begotten of anyone. The Son is neither made nor created, but is begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is neither made nor created nor begotten, but proceeds from the Father and the Son. So there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And within this Trinity, none comes before or after, none is greater or inferior. But all three persons are co-equal and co-eternal. So that in every way, as stated before, all three persons are to be worshipped as one God, and one God worshipped as three persons. So far, our confession of faith, I urge you to leave this open or put a bookmark there. We'll be coming back to that. At this time, let's join together in the singing of the Psalm of the Day. It is Psalm 73. You find this on page 94 in the front part of your hymnal. Let's sing together Psalm 73. Our reading from the New Testament letters is recorded for us by the Apostle Paul in the second letter that he wrote to his young co-worker Timothy. This is the opening chapter uh, starting here at verse 7. Here the Apostle Paul uh, is urging Timothy and, and us as well. He says, do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord, to testify to the, the greatness of who he is, testify to what he has done for us. I start here at uh, verse seven of chapter one. Paul says, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power of love and of self-discipline. So do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord or ashamed of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God who has saved us and called us to a holy life not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. 
This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet I am not ashamed because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. What you heard from me, keep as a pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. This is the word of our Lord. If you turn once again to the Athanasian Creed, uh, we continue on with our confession of faith several lines down there on page 133. It is furthermore necessary for eternal salvation truly to believe that our Lord Jesus Christ also took on human flesh. Now this is the true Christian faith. He is God, eternally begotten from the nature of the Father, and he is man, born in time from the nature of his mother, fully God, fully man, with rational soul and human flesh. And though he is both God and man, Christ is not two persons, but one. One not by changing the deity into flesh, but by taking humanity into God. Christ is God, and God is Christ. One indeed, not by mixture of the natures, but by unity in one person. For just as the rational soul and flesh are one human being, so God and man are one Christ. So far, our confession of faith. At this time, let's join together in the singing of the verse of the day in song. It's on the middle of page three of this morning's bulletin. Please stand now for the reading of our gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel is recorded for us by the evangelist Luke. This is in chapter 3, starting here at verse 21. This is the account of Jesus' baptism by John the baptizer in the Jordan River. Notice all three persons of the Trinity are distinctly present and mentioned here. Luke writes this, when all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. A voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Now Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. This is the gospel of our Lord. Be to you, Please be seated once again as we join in our next hymn, hymn 193, Come Now Almighty King, hymn 193.
Peace to you from our almighty triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As I mentioned before, the word of God for a special focus on this festival of the Holy Trinity is our Old Testament lesson recorded for us in Jeremiah chapter 10. Uh, we heard this earlier. I reread just a couple of verses starting here at verse 6. No one is like you, O Lord. You are great and your name is mighty in power. Who should not revere you, O king of the nations? This is your due. This is the word of our Lord. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we ask for your blessings upon us today. Lord, enlighten our hearts and our minds and build up our faith in you. Lord, we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of our triune God, who is marvelous in his majesty and mysterious in his triune being, the one who truly is merciful to us and is concerned about each and every one of us, fellow people of God. It was nearly a generation ago that the Gatorade Corporation came out with a rather extensive uh, advertising campaign uh, that was promoting their Gatorade prod, uh, product, and it had a rather catchy jingle to it, and it, uh, it ha was set to the music and said, uh, be like Mike. So who is it talking about, of course? Michael Jordan, right? Uh, and the implication, of course, is it, drink our Gatorade product and, and you know, you can be like Mike, you know, if you work really hard and dedicate yourself to it and, and especially use our product, you know, maybe you can be like Mike, this, this superstar basketball player. But I wonder how often Michael Jordan's name is mentioned today. Now, I'm not a huge uh, professional basketball fan, but... You know, I imagine most of the time when his name is mentioned today, it's people reminiscing about, you know, the, the greats of time past, those great players of, of yesteryear. You know, today, there's a whole new generation of, of superstar basketball players, I suppose you could say, probably ones who grew up hearing that advertising campaign to be like Mike and Probably there are some of them who are a lot like Michael Jordan. Uh, maybe even some who exceed Michael Jordan in their skills and abilities on the basketball court. Be like Mike. Well, this morning, God's prophet by the name of, of Jeremiah asks the question, who is like the Lord? Now, Jeremiah uh, is, is speaking on this topic and, and he really has this rather scathing denunciation of the people of Judah. And, and he asks that question here, uh, you know, who is like God? And that's what we want to focus our attention on this morning. Who is like the Lord? Now, Jeremiah had a rather challenging ministry as the Lord called him to be his prophet to the people of Judah, these chosen people, uh, God's chosen people that he had led them out of the slavery of Egypt. He had brought them to the promised land and given them the promised land. And, and the, the majority of of Jeremiah's mission was to call these people to repentance because in spite of God's faithfulness and all that he had done for them, 
they so often went chasing after the, the idols, the false gods of the unbelieving pagan nations around them. And that's why the Lord has Jeremiah start off the, this chapter. Hear what the Lord says to you, O house of Israel. This is what the Lord says. Do not learn the ways of the nations or be terrified by signs in the sky, though the nations are terrified by them. He's talking here about you know, things like comets in the skies and things like that, or, or solar eclipses or lunar eclipses. We had one of those just a, a, not long ago. And, and so many of these pagan societies thought, oh, these things are omens. You know, there's, a, there's an eclipse of the sun or the moon or whatever, and these things are omens of, of bad things to come because this or that God is, is offended, this or that that God is, is angry or upset, or that's just the whim of, of this idol or that idol. So uh, you know, he says, do not learn the ways of the nation or be terrified by signs in the skies. And then he goes on, for the customs of the peoples are worthless. They cut a tree out of the forest and a craftsman shapes it with his chisel. They adorn it with silver and gold. They fasten it with a hammer and nails so it will not totter. Talking about you know, making these idols. He says they're like a scarecrow in a melon patch. Their idols cannot speak. They must be carried because they cannot walk. Do not fear them. They can do no harm nor can they do any good. What Jeremiah is really saying is this, this going chasing after these idols of the pagan nations around, you know, not, not only is it foolishness, it's really stupid. It, it's really against all logic, against all common sense. You know, what, you, you want to worship this idol he's saying? You know, somebody went out in the woods and hacked down a tree and carved it up and some other artisan, maybe very skilled people, but they covered it with precious metal, gold or silver. And, and he even says they even dress it up. Uh, then it is dressed in blue and purple, all made by skilled workers. And do and you think this is the God who is going to do something for you? You think this is the God who's, who's going to protect you or, or bring you his favor and things like that? That doesn't even make sense. You know, the, these, these are products of your own hands or, or some other person. They, again, they might be very skilled people who do this, but, but it's just absurd. It, Jeremiah's words here are just, a lot of places are just dripping with sarcasm. He's saying this, this just doesn't make sense. It's, it's stupid to, to worship uh, these idols. They're, uh, they're as powerless as paper dolls. Why, why would you want to worship them? Well, as, as stupid as it is to worship an idol... We need to recognize that, that that is such a common temptation for people, even still today. And in fact, we can't just say it's a common temptation. We really have to say it's the common temptation. It's, it's a universal temptation for, for every human being to, to worship idols of, of some kind or another. And that's really, God's testimony to that is that that's the very first commandment, isn't it? You shall have no other gods. Don't worship any idols. God says, me first, I'm number one, I'm to be number one priority in your hearts and in your lives and in your worship and in everything. So what kind of idols are we tempted by? Well, there's that, that 
age old standard of you know money and the things money can buy and and the devil just keeps going back to that one because it works so well that's that that's the sinful human heart just just desires those kinds of things uh, money or or power and position and prestige you know uh, what do other people say about me you know and i i want to have this kind of position of power and so forth uh, or maybe we think of, of the technology of today. You know, Jeremiah talks about the works of people's hands, the things that people can accomplish. Yet isn't that just a, a, such a real temptation in our world today? You know, people say, oh, we can accomplish anything. We can just, if we set our minds to this or that or the other thing, we can do anything. Look at us, look at what we can do. Isn't that just like the, the idol that the, the carver carves out of a hunk of wood. Or maybe the temptation, the idol that, that we are tempted by are, is really the people around us, the, the ones that we love the most, are our own family. You know, Jesus says, if, if anyone loves father or mother more than me, they're not worthy of me. If anyone loves son or daughter more than me, they're not worthy of me. See, there's all kinds of temptations to these, these idols. You know, maybe our, our idol is our work or our farm or our possessions, a business, whatever it might be. Or for some people, it's, it's the, the environment. You know, the Apostle Paul talks about that in the New Testament, how people are going to forsake the worship of the creator and instead worship the creation itself. What nonsense, what foolishness that is. You know, Jeremiah says that all of these idols, all of the idols, whatever it is that a person sets their heart on most, he says it's, it's a fraud, it's a fake. It's total foolishness to worship these, these idols, these false gods. And then right about in the middle of this section, uh, the, the prophet Jeremiah speaks this word of the Lord and, and it, it doesn't really stand out so much in, in our Bibles, but it, it must have for the, the people of Judah originally because Jeremiah switches languages here. Most of the Old Testament is written in Hebrew, and uh, the first nine verses, uh, are, or first 10 verses here are in Hebrew, and all of a sudden, for just this one verse, verse 11, he switches languages to the Aramaic language, which is a more universal language, and there's gonna be more and more people that the people of Israel are gonna have contact with, especially as they come invading their land, and, and he wants them to be able to tell anyone and everyone the truth, verse 11, he says, tell them this, these gods who did not make the heavens and the earth will perish from the earth and from under the heavens. That's because they are nothing. Idols are a fraud, they are a fake, they are nothing. But he says the true God, the true God, the triune God is the, the real deal. Listen to what he says in the very last verse here. He who is the portion of Jacob, that's a special name for God here, the portion of Jacob, the chosen people uh, of God, he is their, their, uh, their Lord, the portion of Jacob is not like these, for he is the maker of all things, including Israel, the tribe of his inheritance. The Lord Almighty is his name. A couple of weeks ago, I, I got an advertisement sent to me, an uh, email to me. It's from this uh, Christian uh, education products company uh, that they, they make various things available for, for teaching 
biblical truths. And, and the one that caught my attention a couple of weeks ago was, was uh, a product that they were advertising saying, here's a way that you can teach the truths of the Holy Trinity and make them understandable to little children. I thought, well, this must be pretty interesting. I can't even make the truths of, of the Holy Trinity, the mysteries of God's divine being. I can't make them understood to, to adults. In fact, I can't comprehend them with my own mind. Well, I clicked on that link, and I thought it was ironic that nothing at all showed up. But God's being is is so far above us that our little minds simply cannot comprehend God's being, that God, as we said in the, the Athanasian Creed, God is one deity, one being, and yet there are three distinct persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. How can that be? It's way beyond our understanding. It's like, it's like trying to, to empty the ocean with a, a, a little bucket. The, the ways of God are so infinitely deep that we can't, cannot understand them. But what we can do is immerse ourselves in the truths of what God has revealed to us. Even though we can't understand the truths about the Trinity, we still take them to heart of what the triune God has done for us. You know, the most astounding thing of all is that God would pay attention to pitiful, little, insignificant me and you. But God says you're not little insignificant. God says you are so important to me that I devised my plan of salvation for you. The Heavenly Father, even before the world was created, determined that he was going to send his one and only son into this world to have another mystery, the mystery, we talked about it in the, the uh, Athanasian Creed as well, the mystery of Jesus being that he's true God and true man at the same time. But the God-man laid down his life for us there at the cross to, to win forgiveness of all of our sins, including our sins of, of chasing after the, the idols that tempt us. And it's God the Holy Spirit who's worked in our hearts to, to bring us to faith and to sustain our faith and to increase our faith. That's the amazing triune God who has shown us his infinite love. As Jeremiah says here, the Lord Almighty is his name. He's awesome in his being. He's awesome in his loving kindness to each one of us. So you might think of that advertising campaign, you know, be like Mike. And today there's probably a, any number of, of professional superstar basketball players who are a lot like Mike, maybe even, maybe even exceeding his skills and abilities on the basketball court. But who is like the Lord? There is absolutely no one. All the, all the idols are fakes, they're frauds, they're, they're nothing. Only our triune God is the real deal. So God calls us to, to simply stand in his presence and, and to drink in what his holy word tells us, to drink in the, the greatness of his power that Jeremiah describes so powerfully here. But even more importantly, to drink in what our triune God has shown, uh, shown to us his loving kindness and his salvation. So may the Holy Spirit continue to work in our hearts to, to lead us to stand in amazement at our amazing triune God. May the Holy Spirit bless us with his power. Amen. 
Please stand. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus continue to uplift us and uphold us with those marvelous truths of our salvation in our triune God. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Let us pray. Triune God, you are the one eternal God whose name we praise forever. We could not have known you, our only Savior, if you had not revealed yourself to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons, yet one God. Remove from us all unbelief and grant us humble faith as we contemplate this high and holy mystery. Scatter all those who are wise in their own conceits and give us a simple childlike trust to worship you as Trinity in unity and unity in Trinity. O God, our Father, whatever good is in us, whatever good things we have, and whatever good we do comes from you alone. In you we live and move and have our being. Open our eyes to see the gifts you shower down on us daily, purely out of your fatherly love and care. O Lord Jesus, our Savior, you came into our world to make the Father known to us. You joined yourself to us by taking on our humanity. You brought, uh, brought us back to God by the shedding of your blood. In love, you walked the way of suffering and bore alone the wrath of God, the wrath that we by our sins deserved. Help us believe that all you did, all you suffered, and all you endured, you did for us to rescue us and set us free. In the bright new hope of your resurrection, teach us to offer our lives each day in praise to God and in love to our neighbor. O Creator Spirit, you have opened our eyes by the bright light of your word. You have burst through our deafness with the clear sound of your voice in the Holy Scriptures. You have breathed into us new life by the power of the gospel. Through word and sacrament, help us grow in understanding the breadth and depth and height of the love of God. Make us firm in our resolve to do battle with our sin. In every weakness be our strength, that we may show ourselves to be God's true children, faithful in prayer, constant in hope, and fervent in love. And Lord, confident of your mercies and grace, we also bring our special petitions before you. And Lord, we pray for people who are dealing with injuries and, and illnesses, and we ask, Lord, for your blessings upon them. We pray for those dealing with uh, COVID and, and other illnesses, uh, including Charlie Zeck, who is uh, dealing with other medical issues as well. We pray for uh, Barb Nauman, the wife of retired pastor Peter Nauman, as she has now entered into hospice care. We pray also for Stanley Nelson, the son of Pastor Ken and Penny Nelson of South Shore as he undergo, undergoes uh, cancer treatments. And, and Lord, we ask that you would be with all of your children with your loving care. Lord, stand by their side and assure them of your faithfulness and your love. And Lord, bring strength and healing to them according to your wisdom. Lord. We commend them all to your loving care. 
And Lord, we also pray for all of the world missionaries and the home missionaries who were commissioned yesterday at the the Taste of Missions event at our Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary. Lord, we ask that you would bless them and, and all of the proclaimers of your gospel around the world. And Lord, We also ask for your continued blessings uh, as, Lord, we we pray for good weather. Uh, We ask, Lord, that you would send the sunshine as needed and the rains in due season, Lord, all according to your mercy and grace. And, Lord, we also continue to pray for the, the families and survivors of the senseless shootings in in Texas and various other places around the country and around the world. We we ask, Lord, that you would bring comfort and peace to, to troubled hearts. But we ask, Lord, especially that you would use even these incidents to be opportunities to share the peace of your gospel. We pray also, Lord, for those in Ukraine in this time of war. And Lord, we also pray for our upcoming Dakota, Montana District Convention uh, scheduled to begin on on Tuesday morning. Lord, send your Holy Spirit uh, to bless and guide uh, your people in doing your will. Lord, we bring all of these prayers in your holy name. Amen. Please stand as we gather all of our prayers together in the prayer which Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive then with peace and joy in your hearts the blessing of our gracious triune God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated for our closing hymn. It is hymn 584, O Blessed Holy Trinity, hymn 584.
Once again, good morning. Good, morning. good to be with you here today. Um, just a, a number of things I wanted to, to highlight in the announcements today. First of all, a, an invitation from uh, the members of St. Martin's Lutheran Church. They are planning a farewell for uh, Pastor Paul Yonke and his wife Carol. Uh, Pastor Yonke is retiring after serving for 40 years in the ministry and are moving to Wisconsin. So it is uh, the, the last, last day of July, uh, Sunday, July 31st. 31st uh, for that, that farewell at St. Martin's. Uh, also closer on the calendar, next Sunday is the, uh, the benefit that's planned for uh, Stanley Nelson, uh, son of Pastor Ken and Penny Nelson of South Shore. Um, so uh, this fundraiser is being sponsored by our church there together with the community. Um, the, a meal starting at one o'clock, a live auction and a silent auction and so forth. There's the invitation if people want to, to provide something for the auctions, you're invited to do that. Um, so uh, that's next Sunday. Um, also, I wanted to mention, I mentioned in the prayers, yesterday's uh, Taste of Missions event at our, our Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary took place. A um, number of, of missionaries, world missionaries and home missionaries were commissioned there. Um, if you'd like to see this or part, you could participate virtually, uh, yesterday uh, I, I took in some of that, um, but I, I believe they're also going to be archived on the Synod website and things like that. So if you'd like to, to hear some of the missionaries uh, talk about their mission work and so forth, uh, those either are now or soon will be available online. Uh, also, please note the information uh, looking for volunteers for our Wells booth at the South Dakota State Fair. That might seem like it's a long ways off, but there's a lot of uh, organization and, and preparation to be done there. Uh, if you can help out with that, uh, if you could please let me know, uh, Pastor Reichel's uh, Phone number and email and so forth are there too, um, so you could contact him as well. Uh, also, please take note of the information about the Dakota Montana District Convention starting Tuesday morning. Um, this is uh, the COVID delayed uh, centennial celebration of our Dakota Montana District. Um, the, the service is going to be Tuesday evening. It's a little different schedule. Usually it's the beginning of the convention, uh, but it's going to be Tuesday evening instead at seven o'clock. Everybody is invited to that. So it's the centennial celebration service and also the de dedication service of the new facilities at Great Plains Lutheran High School. Um, so that's Tuesday evening and then the con convention continues on uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, Everyone is invited to the, the uh, centennial service. I believe it might also be available online, uh, but you're certainly invited to, to join uh, in person in the service. Uh, observers are welcome for the whole uh, district convention too. If anybody wants to, to see or observe part of that or all of it, you're, you're invited to do that as well. Um, I also wanted to, to mention, I had sent out an email very early this past week that, that somebody had tested positive uh, here in the congregation who was here last Sunday. Um, it, I, I personally have been testing with the at-home at kits uh, regularly in the last week, and it's all been, been negative, so I'm thankful for that. Uh, but there are test kits if you'd like one of those, or any, however many you want to take. I think there are uh, quite a number of them on the table back uh, in the back of the church there. So uh, they're available for you. Take as many as you like, uh, just to, to be on the safe side. Uh, you can, can have those, those tests there and keep those people in your, your thoughts and prayers who are, are affected by that. With that, uh, God be with you then, and just to be super on the safe side, I'll, I'll greet you from here this morning. Uh, so God bless you, and may the, the triune God continue to, to lead and guide you and give you peace and joy. Thank you. <laughs>